but happy to have this guest on our show for the first time joining a list of very high level women's competitors in all the leagues we've had uh, contenders and champions from PFL UFC one championship in Bellator this is an amazing lightweight fighter top contender getting ready to fight for a million dollars in the PFL finals we're so happy to welcome Taylor Gardado to our show welcome Taylor Hi, thank you for having me. My pleasure. We are excited to talk to you. Uh, I love the fact that there's a women women's lightweight division. You can ask anyone that knows our show, including my producer and co-host, that I've always been saying, why does it have to be only these smaller girls fighting? Because people want to see different weight classes for the women. And so I'm really excited that the PFL has embraced that. And I'm sure you were as well. I believe all of your fights have been at lightweight or am I wrong? Um, my first fight was at, um, as a pro, I should say, it was at 135 for the Invicta Phoenix tournament. That's right. And, and that's where you fought the guests we're having after you, Serena De Jesus. funny enough. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and that was a really good fight. And so I didn't realize that that was at 35 because that's where she stayed. You've gone up in weight and it looks like you found a good fit at 55. So you went to, from 35 to 55 or did, did you do a fight at uh, 45 as well? No, I, uh, I went straight from 35 to 55 as my, in my pro career. As, as an amateur, I fought all the way from like 35 up to 55 all over the place. <laughs> nice. And do you feel that 55 is your home or do you think you may be visiting 45 again one day? Um, I honestly can see myself down at 35 again one day. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, like I, I'm very, I feel super healthy. You know, obviously I don't have to cut any weight for this 55 division, right. but um, I just feel my strongest when I'm at 135 because I feel so much bigger than, than the other uh, women in the division. Absolutely. Speaking of that, uh, and we have you on video. I think we're seeing your ear now. I know you can't see us, but we do have video with you there. <laughs> no problem. That's totally good. All good. Um, so... Your opponent probably can't stay the can't say the same about what weight divisions she would fight at. She did make forty five once, and she still looked good. So she's not an, an absolutely enormous lightweight, but she probably would never be seeing thirty five. Uh, Kayla Harrison, would you agree? Probably not. I know she uh, she said she. I think I recall her saying something about like uh, when she made forty five, it wasn't impossible, and she was able to do it. You know, dieting down and everything, but she didn't like the cut there um but i just don't see her at 35 she's a big strong woman so like why why take away the strength and and have to cut even probably muscle to get down to 35 without a doubt so do you think she, when on fight day she'll be stepping in there five or six pounds heavier than you or 10 pounds or the same weight as you what would you say probably heavier than me because I, I honestly step into that cage um no more than 160 um but i i just i don't see her or I see her being bigger than me. All the girls that I've fought have been much bigger than me. So I don't see, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've been the smallest person in the division so far. Yep, gotcha. And this is October 27th, the finals. And you uh, just came off a win over, uh, what was it, Mariana Marias, was it? Yes. And she, I think, had two fights with Kayla, right? Uh, one, I believe. Well, maybe, no, someone, one, one. Someone had two fights with Kayla. I wonder if Dr. Adam Rota, my producer, can queue up... Uh, you, if you want to pull up Taylor Gardado, and then we want it, we can cross reference by going down to her previous. Oh, yeah, go to Kayla. Yeah, go to Kayla. Okay, so who, I think it was uh, Larissa Pacheco had two fights with her. Let's see. It was actually, did Marias or was it Larissa? Yep, you're right. It was Larissa. So Marias had oh. one fight with her and did get caught early. So what do you think? Kayla Harrison, she's like this big blonde juggernaut. Uh, former two-time Olympic judo gold medalist. Uh, she has had some women give her some problems, but then she's just had some women come in there and get absolutely smashed. Obviously, she probably has an intimidation factor going for her, but I, I don't get the feeling that you're someone that's intimidated that much. What do you think about Kayla Harrison and, and, and what you bring to the table? Um, I'm not intimidated. I, I don't think I've ever been intimidated by any um, athlete. They're in there for the same reason that I'm in there. You know, I'm more in there to fight. You're already there. You're already in the cage. There's no reason to be scared and add any extra emotions that you don't need. Um, I, I know I'm a huge underdog in this fight, um, but the thing is, like, like I have nothing to lose with this fight, really. I've, I've made it to the finals in a um, season that I wasn't even, A, supposed to be in, but then, B, 
expected to make it to the finals in. So, I mean, like I, I've made it this far, win or lose, like I'm, I'm completely proud of myself. My team is very proud of myself, but we're planning on winning. So, I mean. Without a doubt, absolutely. And you actually bring some grappling to the table. It seems like she ends up fighting a lot of strikers. Mm -hmm. um right and then she ends up just you know just smashing them and you've got some strength you've you uh, you really seem to have a good fight iq in there and uh to a determined fighter and uh you're over there are you still at extreme couture i know sure dog tends to give crappy information so uh <laughs> they have you as extreme couture i bet they're wrong or, or are they right no, they're right. They're right. Cool. So you get some really good looks over there. And a lot of people like Extreme Couture is making is kind of like reinventing themselves. They were huge 10 and 15 years ago. They kind of slowed down a little bit in the mid 2000 teens. And now a lot of people are going there again. So I'm sure you're getting some great looks. And so uh, I, I, you know, the interesting thing is she seems like she's been wrestling a lot. It seems like very few people are trying to clinch with her and have her throw them. If you notice, she's a judo black belt who's not frequently throwing anybody, but it seems like she's kind of morphed into a wrestler, but that wasn't her pedigree. She's not any kind of all world freestyle or Greco a wrestler but she seems to want to do that and wrestling is right in your wheelhouse uh do you think that that's something that's going to present an interesting challenge for her and you plan on uh using some of that wrestling or how much do you want to disclose on what your strategy is no that's fine i mean like everyone knows i wrestled um i mean like and i think that's that's going to make a difference because she really hasn't fought someone that has a heavy wrestling background um, she's fought a lot of strikers she's fought a lot a lot of kickboxers stuff like that but i mean like someone that knows how to read takedowns and and stuff like that you know like it's it i'm hoping to present a challenge to her that she hasn't experienced yet yeah absolutely i mean if you end up on top in a scramble the crowd is probably going to go berserk <laughs> <laughs> so you know and, and speaking about that have you ever like had a crowd just reacting that just like surprised you i mean it's got to be a weird feeling 99 percent of us don't know what it feels like to be fighting in front of a crowd, right? So tell us what happens, like all of a sudden, have you ever had anything where a crowd just reacts and, and, and does it catch you by surprise? Does it fill you with adrenaline? Does it distract you? What's it like? I honestly can't hear any, I think I'm notorious for this. I can't hear anything outside of my corner, which is actually a great attribute to have as a fighter. Um, but I really, I don't, I don't know if I've ever heard like the crowd go crazy or them boo or anything like that in, during the fight. Like after the fight, you hear everything, obviously. But I mean, like during the fight, I only can hear my three cornermen, and I think that's why I like having them there is because their voices are so like I'm so in tune with their voices that I can tune in everything else out except for them. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about who usually corners you, and as much as you want to divulge, who's been helping you with this camp, or who are some of your regular training partners at Extreme Couture. Yeah. Yeah, so my corners are Dennis Davis, Nathan Pettit, and um, Eric Nixick. Um, Eric Nixick was the 2020 Coach of the Year uh, last year through MMA Junkie and the Schmo and all that stuff. Yep. Um, he he's, he's helped you know coach Francis and Ganu. Um, he coaches Misha Tate. He coaches everyone. He coaches a ton of people, and I'm I'm extremely proud to be under him because you know he's he when it comes down to it, he's just so smart and he breaks things down so simple which works for a lot of fighters, including myself, who's, who's like, if you take, say too big of words, I'm going to be confused. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I hear you. He, he's very good at saying, here's why we're doing this. So this is what, when we're going to do this. And this is how we're going to do this. Absolutely. So he's very good at those three things. Yeah. Um, uh, my coach, Dennis Davis. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No problem. I've heard amazing things about Eric Nixick. I'm sure the other guys are great, but yeah, he's, he's apparently just one of the great minds of MMA. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, my other coach, my coach Dennis Davis, he is a um, jiu-jitsu black belt. He's been fighting for years. You know, he's he's retired now, obviously, as a fighter. He's just a coach here. He's also the head coach at Extreme. Mm -hmm. um, he is so smart. And he's actually my main training partner for this camp cool. um, because he's he's great with judo and, and wrestling and all that stuff. So he's But he's just so smart, and he breaks things down extremely well for me. Um, and then my coach, Nathan Pettit, he, he's, he's my mitts and pad holder and he's really good with Muay Thai. Um, so he, he has me and he, he's good with reading situations too. So he's, he's good. Like, Hey, you need to take literally like half step this way and you're going to land here. And then it happens. And he, I don't know, they all just have their purpose. And, and I think that using all three of them ha has made it just like 
a perfect mesh for me. And like, and, and I can understand them all when they're talking to me and I can break, they, they all know not to talk over each other, which is nice. They're all, they all get along really well, which is a huge thing for me too. Um, but the, it's literally, it's just like having three of my big, my big brother's best friends there with me every time I bring them with me. That's awesome. And you mentioned Misha Tate. Did you, do you get any looks from her or is she too small to kind of really do anything for you uh, at uh, when you have lightweight fights? And if not her, who, who are some of the training partners that have helped you for this camp or that usually help you? Um, she and I trained a little bit before her first fight um, back, but uh, once she started losing the weight, she, and she got really focused into her own training camp as well. We're both focused on our own selves, so we don't train with each other um, too much anymore. Um, but yeah, we've off we've offered to help each other, but I mean, like it just comes down to hey, we're just offering to help, and then we both just go and do our own thing. Right, for sure, for sure. Yeah, but as far as like my training partners go, I use guys all the time. That's just how I've always been. Um, I get a look from a girl here and there. There's one girl here um, that is an amazing wrestler. She wrestled in college. Her name's Erin Scheidt, um, and she's actually my size. And she she actually only has a wrestling background, so she's really getting into MMA. But um, she comes and helps me on my wrestling days, and she she her and I are scrapping all the time. But um, my other main training partner is my husband, um, AJ Gardado, who he just beat him and I just are trying to beat the crap out of each other every time he comes in. So that's a lot of fun. <laughs> nice, I like that. <laughs> what what is it that seems to be making kayla successful obviously she's a big strong girl she's confident she's got a good training camp at uh at american top team but they also lose sometimes as well um it seems almost like yeah like a lot of the girls are intimidated or just strikers or just jujitsu girls i like the fact that you're kind of a more compact thicker girl with wrestling because she doesn't usually have opponents like that and and um it, it, it's it's weird with her wrestling it seems like she's kind of become a pretty good wrestler but i mean if she if she was not able to throw anybody is her wrestling good enough to keep keep her winning? Uh, what's your thought about how good Kayla Harrison's wrestling is? Yeah, I think so. I think um, just in general with women's MMA, um, nothing against it, but I mean, like a lot of women don't like to wrestle, right. and um, yeah. and and if you get really good at wrestling, it's hard to beat it. It it it's just it is what it is. It's hard to get past a good wrestler's double leg, especially if they can blast double you or snatch single you, anything like that, like a body lock, anything. Yeah. Um, once, but I think if she didn't have judo, yeah, she'd be she'd still be a great fighter. I mean, like she's gotten where she is because she's a great mixed martial artist, but she's only had to use so much right now. So I mean, like. I'm hoping to test all of her um, all of her assets come October 27th. Absolutely, and I believe PFL even the finals are three rounds or are they five? Five, I believe. Okay, cool. It's got to be then. It would make sense. I hope so. And, That's what I've been thinking. Yeah. yeah, and I wondered if how many fives she's gone. Doctor Adam Rorta, can you click on Kayla Harrison? Curious to see if she's gone any fives. You probably know Taylor, but let's take a look. So Kayla has a wow round one round one round there's a five she went five with larissa once and then it's another one round one one run round three round one and round three so a lot of round ones uh then there's a round two and then she uh she went five with larissa and she went three with larissa so can you take anything from the fact that larissa pacheco went the distance with her both times i don't think you you haven't fought larissa i don't believe but are you familiar with her and what did larissa do in those fights so much better than these other women but just not quite enough to win um i think that larissa literally just didn't show any fear um didn't respect her you know what i mean um i think that's what a lot of these women do is they they show up and they put so much respect to which she, she does she does deserve some respect but i mean like when you get into a fight you're there to fight someone right. so the respect kind of has to go out the door a little bit and you kind of have to remember to implement implement excuse me your own game plan um, otherwise, you're just going to get worked the whole time, which I think a lot of her opponents do. They get in there and they're like, okay, got to look out for that takedown. Got to look out for that takedown. Oh, no, I'm taking down. Right. And they, right. Start, they, they forget that they can punch and they can kick and they can do all these things, too, that can at least slow her down, you know? So um, I think when it comes down to it, like, it's, it's just a matter of just implementing your own game plan and uh, and while while being smart and avoiding her. Absolutely. And how has the vibe been with you and Kayla? All respectful or, the, or is there some trash talk? No, all, all respect, honestly. Um, there's been no trash talk from what I understand. I, I, at least I, I don't I don't look into it too much. So right. I mean, like, 
Um, if she has said anything mean, I haven't read anything about it, but um, I, I don't like to trash talk. I'm not a big trash talker. So, um, I mean, like, as far as I understand, it's been nothing but mutual respect. I think the, the fact that we're both moms has something to do with us respecting each other a little bit, too. Yeah. Um, because we both understand the struggle outside of the gym as well. Without a doubt. That is super cool. Do you think you can throw hands with her, or would you much prefer if it was, uh, it was a lot of wrestling? I'm, I'm comfortable everywhere. It doesn't matter where it's going to go. I'm, I'm going to be comfortable. Um, I'm getting, this is the hardest training camp of my life. Um, we're, we're doing everything smart and everything efficiently. Um, and and I'm, I'm feeling better than ever, honestly. Nice, nice. Gardado, what name is that background? Are you like Spanish or Italian or what's your background? Um, it's my husband's name. It's uh, Mexican, but I'm, I'm black and white. Cool. I like that. So you have all great things, it looks like, from all yeah. backgrounds. Very cool. And we only have another uh, minute or two left, but uh, I know that you're excited about this fight and uh, you're going to do well. I think you are going to. Um, do you plan on having a long career for several more years or do you have an end date? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I do this because I love it. Like, that's, obviously, this money is very, very, very cool. Like, I'm change I've already changed our lives um, this year with the, the PFL. Awesome. Um, but... But I mean, like, when it comes down to it, I, I came back into this sport because I love it. And I knew that I wanted to continue to do it. Um, and and I, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. I'm healthy. And, I like, I'm 30 now, but I'm, I feel healthier. And 30-year-old Taylor could beat up 21-year-old Taylor any day. Yes. Like, <laughs> um, so, I mean, like, when it comes down to it, I'm still getting better and better and better. And I'm going to keep going until I don't think I'm getting better anymore. I like that. And I think you're right in your prime, you know, which is a, a really good position to be in. Well, what's the best social media place for people to support you, Taylor? Um, I'm really active on Instagram. Um, it's Taylor Gordito, which means Taylor Little Fat Boy in Spanish, which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's because I like to eat, and I was like, oh, that's perfect for PFL. <laughs> so, Taylor Gordito on Instagram. Um, I do have a Twitter that's also Taylor Gordito, and then um, I have Facebook, but I don't really add anyone on there. No problem. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. PFL is awesome. We love Tawny Cox over there. She's amazing, and I'm glad that you appreciate them. They treat their fighters well, and I'm so excited to see you do well. You've got a great attitude. You're, you're a tough, grindy wrestler there, and you've got some good hands, and uh, I'm excited to see you uh, pull off the upset and surprise the world and, uh, and beat Kayla Harrison. I wish you the very best and really appreciate you taking the time to join us here on the MMA Power Hour. Thank you so much for having me. You've been amazing. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.